Hello everybody. So it's Sean talking you through trigonometry today. So we're going to be finding sides and finding angles using trigonometry. So this is a foundation maths GCSE topic. It never used to be, but since we've made foundation harder for some strange reason, here we are, we have to deal with it. So this video is going to talk you through how to work out the lengths of sides in triangles and also how to find angles in triangles using trigonometry. So let's get straight into it. So introduction. So what does trigonometry mean? So literally, if you were to look it up, which I did because I'm a sad maths teacher, perhaps, or maybe I'm just interested, it's a noun. It means the branch of mathematics dealing with the relations of the sides and angles of triangles and with the relevant functions of any angles. So that's a bit complicated in itself. So let's just simplify this bit down. So what it's getting at in essence is it's just the relations of the sides and angles of triangles. So to put it simply, in plain English, trigonometry is the study of triangles. Trig or tree as in tree angles. Tri triangles. There you go. So when do you know when you need to use it in the exam? This is the most important thing. You can't use it for just any triangle. So you can use trig um, if it's a right angled triangle. So the triangle has to have a right angle inside it before you can even consider using trigonometry. So check for a 90 degree angle before you do anything else. So case one might be, you know, at least an angle and a side. In that case, you can find another side. And so that's the case when you can work out a side. The second case is, you know, at least two sides. And if you know two sides, you can find an angle. So either, you know, one side and an angle, you can work out a side. You need to know two sides though, and then you can work out an angle. So if you've heard of trigonometry, I bet anything, I'd even bet as much as 20 pence, you will have heard of these three magic triangles. So here they are. So, ka, toa, soccer toa. Almost sounds like a forgotten martial art, I suppose, but it's not. So, ka, toa. Three separate triangles. So, ka, toa. Now, I would get told off, perhaps, if I were to say this in public, but a way of remembering this, which I'm not going to write down, um, if you're a bit naughty, you can remember this so, ka, toa as sex on hard concrete always hurts the outer areas. Now, I can't take any credit for coming up with that. I heard it from my old colleague, Martin who was hilarious and a fantastic teacher to boot. So, what do these letters mean? So S stands for sin or sine, but it's followed by the angle. So I'm going to show you this on the triangle here. So on a calculator rather, unless you've got a triangular shaped calculator, which is rare. So S is the sin button, but followed by that, you need to put the angle in question. C stands for cos, followed by the angle, and T stands for tan. So sin, cos, tan buttons are all in a row. And O stands for the opposite side, H stands for the hypotenuse, A stands for the adjacent. So what are the O, H and A? What is an opposite, a hypotenuse and an adjacent? So that brings us to part one, where we need to label the sides first of all. So one of the most important things with trigonometry is the ability to correctly label each side of a triangle, whether it be opposite, hypotenuse, or adjacent. Labeling the sides underpins everything else. So to do this, we need to think about the right angle of the triangle and the angle we're interested in. So that's either the angle we already know or the angle you want to know. So with that in mind, we can now think about labeling these sides. This is example one. Let's label these sides. So we've got the angle here, x. So step one, we need to label the opposite side as O. So we've got the angle x, like I've said. The opposite side is always opposite to the angle you're interested in. So that's why it gets the name opposite. So opposite x, just draw a line going from x to the opposite side, like so. And that side is the opposite. So label that O opposite. Step two, label the hypotenuse as H. Hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side. It's also the side that's opposite to the right angle. 
if you want to know. And so if you look at it this way, there's a right angle, the square shape, and opposite to that is going to be the longest side, which is h. Normally you can just tell by looking which is the longest side. If it's a badly drawn diagram though, it's always opposite to this square shape, which represents a right angle. And finally, the adjacent side, label that A. So I think the opposite and the hypotenuse are the easier ones to label. Just think of the adjacent as being the odd one out. It's the only side, only side left now without a label. So don't make it feel left out. Put a label on it. Here you've got O, H and A. So example two. So let's see if we can do this one. So step one, label the opposite as O. Step two, label the longest side as H. Step three, label the adjacent as A. So opposite to the angle is literally going to be called the opposite side O. The longest side, which is this slanted one here, is H. The other one's got to be, therefore, A, because it's the only one left without a label on it. So we've got O, H and A. Right, this is now your turn to have a go at labelling these sides. It's what you need to know how to do comfortably and confidently to move on. So for each one of these four triangles, label each side H, O or A. So copy them out briefly into your notebook or whatnot. Freeze the video now and then play it when you're ready to find out if you've got the correct labelling done or not. So pause the video now and I'll forward it in a few seconds to see if you've got them right. Okay, and here are the labels for the sites. That's what you should have got. So, moving on a bit further. Next part now, we can label the sides, we can actually calculate the lengths of the sides in question. Now, to make it easier, because you've got the so ka or toa triangles, first of all, we're just going to do it step by step. Just take it one magic formula triangle at, the, at one time. So for the first step, we're just going to think about the SOH, the SO triangle, the one which involves the SIN button. So here's an example. You need to find side X and give our answer correct to one decimal place. So for all these questions, we can give our answer to one decimal place just to keep it a bit simpler. So again, we're just going to give you the steps to do this. I'm going to get these magic triangles up and ready, just as a reminder, but we will be using these all the time for trigonometry, pretty much. So step one, always, is to label the sides of the triangle. So opposite angle first, which is this one. Longest side is H. Short side, well, not short side, sorry. The other side that's left out is A just happens to be the shortest side. It doesn't have to be. It might not be the shortest. So opposite side, longest side, other side A. Step two, we need to now highlight or underline, if you've not got a highlighter, the side you know and the side you want to know. So first I'm going to highlight the side I do know. So I don't know that one. I want to find it out. I do know the opposite which is 7.2. The side I want to know, because it says to find side x, it's this one here. So I want to know the hypotenuse. So I've highlighted the side I know, the O, and the side I want to know, which is H. Step three, we now need to select whichever of the so ka or to triangles includes both of these sides from the first step. So looking here, we want to know the H, we do know the O. So the only triangle here that includes the O and the H is the SO triangle, which I said at the beginning. We're just going to be focusing on SO, the SO triangle. This is just to give you some information if the examiner didn't tell you, which they won't, which of the SO ka toa triangles to use. So it'll be good to know anyway to be a bit more independent. So anyway, because it's the SO triangle, what we're going to do next is copy this one down. Now step four, we're going to use the chosen triangle to calculate the side we want to find. Now, this is 
the main bit. So what we're going to do, the side we want to find, in which case is h, we're going to write first of all h equals, because we want to work out what h is equal to. The next step is, whatever side you want to cover up, whatever thing you want to cover up, with any formula triangle, by the way, you cover up that thing completely. So just blank it out and see what's left. So after blanking out h, which we want to find, we've got O on top, S on the bottom. Like so. Now we need to remember what O stands for. So O is the opposite side, which is 7.2. And S stands for sin, followed by the angle we're talking about, which in this case is 61. So then if you bash that into your calculator, exactly as it appears here, O on top, S on the bottom. I'd even suggest using your fraction button. So 7.2 sin 61 on the bottom. Press equals, give it to one decimal place, it'll be 8.2 metres. And we're done. Next example, we're going to find side x this time, giving the answer correct to one decimal place yet again. So I'm just going to give all the steps in one go, having seen what to do. So step one, label the sides. So we'll have, that's opposite the angle, so that's the O. X is the longest side, the adjacent here. We don't know, we don't even want to know, we don't care. Next of all, need to highlight what we do know. We know the opposite side, I'll change colour actually. We know the opposite side, which is 8. We want to know the hypotenuse, which is given here by the x. So now let's have a look and put in the O and H on each of these triangles. So O occurs in SO and TOA. H occurs in SO and CA but not TOA. So yet again, the triangle with the most information in it, the one we're going to use is the SO triangle. Oops, sorry, I skipped on a bit too fast there. So because we want the SO triangle, I'm going to copy this down. And because we want to find out the H, I'm going to write H equals. So again, because we want H, cover up H in the formula triangle, and we're left with O over S, like we were before. The opposite is 8. S stands for sin of the angle we're talking about, so it'll be sin 49. So get the calculator out, type that in exactly as it appears. So 8 on top, move down, sin 49 on the bottom, 10.6 to one decimal place. So 10.6 meters. Last example, we need to work out side x yet again. So first step label. The more you do these, the quicker you'll become. Opposite the angle is x, longest side is the 43 centimeters, the one that's left is a. Highlight the side we do know, which is the 43 for H. Highlight H in the magic triangles. We want to know X, which is the opposite side. Once again, we see that the SO triangle gives us the most information. So yet again, we're using SO. So copy it down. Only this time, the first two examples, we're finding the hypotenuse. Now we know the hypotenuse, we want to work out the opposite side. Because we want the opposite, write down O equals. Now we're going to cover up the opposite. And what do we have left? We've got S and H next to each other. Now in algebra, 
two things next to each other means one thing multiplied by the other thing. So it means S times H. S stands for sin of the angle. Put the angle always in brackets. Then multiplied by the hypotenuse, which is 43. So do that on your calculator. Sin 25. Now, really important, close off a bracket there. Do not leave that bracket open. Put the angle inside the brackets and close off a bracket. Then times by 43 to one decimal place, we get 18.2, because that seven would force that one to round up. So we get 18.2 centimeters. So that's a few examples there. Now time for you to have a go. So I'll give you a clue. They're all going to be using the soft triangle. You find these missing sides yourself. So give your answer to one decimal place. Follow the steps I've shown you. Pause the video now. Copy down the triangles. Have a go. Then when you're ready, play the video again and see if you've got them right. Okay. And here are the answers. Now I've put on here labels. I've labeled the size for you, just so if you have got these answers wrong at the bottom, you can hopefully try and find out where you may have gone wrong. So that's how you should have labeled the sides. And then based on the labeling, the application of the triangle comes after. And so that's the sin triangle done. Next up, let's have a look at using this CA triangle. The idea I want you to see is it's pretty much all the same idea, whether it be a sin, a cos, or a tan. It's still a magic triangle, always going to be the same idea. Anyway, first example is to find side x and to give the answer correct to one decimal place. So, once again, get the triangles up and ready. Step one, label the sides. Step two, we're going to highlight the side that we know and the side that we want to know. So I'm just going to run through this a bit quicker because it's still exactly the same idea as before. That's the opposite, that's the adjacent, that's the hypotenuse. So because we do know the H, we'd highlight the H. And because we want to know the A, we'd highlight the A and highlight them in these triangles as well. So having done that, you should see that the CA triangle is the most coloured in triangle. That's the triangle that gives us most information. Therefore, that's the triangle we want to use. So we get the CA triangle down here. And then we calculate it in pretty much the same way as what we would have done for the SIN button or the SO triangle. Only now, instead of pressing SIN, we're going to press COS on our calculator. Anyhow. We want side A, so we're going to write down A equals. Now, because we want to find A, we're going to hide it and see what's left. So what's left is C next to H, which means C multiplied by H. C stands for cos of the angle, which we've got 38. Multiplied by H, which is the hypotenuse which we've got here is 17.2. So we're just going to type it into our calculator, exactly as it appears. Cos 38, close off a bracket, multiplied by 17.2. To one decimal place, we'd get 13.6. So we get 13.6 centimetres. And that's done. Example two, we're going to find side x and give answers correct to one decimal place. So for this one, again, same steps. So step one, label the sides. By now, I'm hoping you'll find it pleasantly dull in terms of finding it easy to do. Eventually, with practice, it will become easy. 
that's the opposite. That's the longest side, which is H. Odd one F, odd one left is A. So now we're going to highlight what we do know. We know the H, which is 12.8. We want to know the adjacent side, which has been labeled X. So color in what you know and what you want to know in the magic triangles. So H and A. And surprise, surprise, yet again, the K one is the most colored in. So like I said anyway, it's always going to be K for this section. So we want to work out the adjacent. So start off by putting adjacent equals, because that's what we want. Now cover up the A for adjacent in the form of triangle and see what's left. Same as example one, we have C and H next to each other, so that means C times H. C stands for cos of the angle, so type in cos bracket the angle, which is 64. Multiply that by the hypotenuse, which is 12.8. Press equals and see what happens. It's quite exciting, isn't it? Well, no, it's not, but still. So cos 64 multiplied by 12.8 equals 5.6. So we've got 5.6 centimetres. And that's example two done. You've got the idea now, haven't you? Let's see. Example three. Same drill, different triangle. Label the sides. That's the opposite. Hypotenuse, longest side, that's the adjacent, the other one. Highlight what we know. We do know the adjacent this time. So highlight this in the form of triangles. We want to know the hypotenuse, which is X. So highlight what you want to know again. Yet again, the most colored in triangle is the K triangle. So that's the one we're going to be using. Only this time, we want to find out the hypotenuse. So write down H equals, because that's what we want to find out. Now cover up H in the triangle. Now we've got A on top, C on the bottom. So copy it out exactly as it appears, A on top and C on the bottom. So A means the adjacent, which is nine. C stands for cos of the angle, which in this case is 68. So type it into your calculator, 9 on top, then cos 68 on the bottom, so you get 24.0 centimetres. Like so. And so that's three examples of showing you how to do finding the adjacent and hypotenuse. Now it's going to be your turn. So four triangles. I want you to have a go at these, copy out the questions into your books, label the sides, follow the steps, and see if you can work out the missing side X in each of these examples. So pause the video here, give yourself a minute or two, replay the video when you want to find out the answers. So press pause if you want. Okay, I'm going to reveal the answers. Here we go. Let's see how you did. Boom. Or just a normal here you go. So the answers are underlined in black. If you just want to look at the answers quickly. I've also labelled the sides for you. So if you have got them wrong, you can see how you should have labelled them. Because that's the common reason why people get these incorrect. Again, check your working. Follow it through. Give yourself a big tick and pat on the back if you've got them right. If you've not got them quite right, don't just give yourself a cross. Be thinking where they've gone wrong. Try and see yourself how to correct it. And if you're still unsure, ask your teacher if possible. So we've done the saw triangle. That's just for ka. Have a guess what's going to come next. Yep, the toa triangle. So again, a few examples and you're going to practice on your own. So first of all, we're going to find side x in this one. 
So I'm just going to skip through this example. Label the sides, step one. Step two, highlight what you know and what you want to know. So 12.2 and X. Step three, whichever triangle gives you the most information, whichever is most colourful, we're going to use that triangle. So the only triangle that includes what we know and what we want to know, the A and the O, is the TOA. The SO has got the O but not the A. The CA has got the A but not the O. So TOA is our guy. So we're going to use TOA. Now we've got the TOA triangle, we want to work out the opposite in this case. So we're going to write down O equals. Because that's what we want it to find. So because we want to find O, we hide it. And O equals T times A. Because we've got T and A next to each other on the same line. Without any instruction, that means one multiplied the other. So T stands for tan of the angle we're talking about, which is 43 degrees. Then multiply that by the adjacent side, which is 12.2. So tan 43 multiplied by 12.2. We get 11.4. So the answer for this one, the opposite is 11.4 centimetres. Example two, similar idea. So in case you can't quite see it because of the contrast, that's 29 degrees. Let's go over it for you. And we want to find out side x. So let's follow the same old ritual. So label the sides, opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. What we do know is the adjacent, so colour it in. What we want to know is the opposite, so colour it in and highlight it in the triangles. Yet again, the TOA is the most colourful triangle, therefore the one we're going to be using. So copy out the TOA triangle. This time we want to work out the O, so put O equals and cover it up in this triangle. Again, what we'll have on the left is T and A next to each other, which again will mean T multiplied by A. So T stands for tan of the angle, which is 29. And we're going to multiply that by A, which is 63.5. So bash that into your calculator. 10, 29, close bracket, incredibly important that step. Multiply by 63.5. To one decimal place, you should hopefully find that you get 35.2 centimetres. One more example, example three. Label the sides. Opposite the angle is that side of 12. The longest side is this one. The adjacent is on side X. Highlight what we do know. We know the opposite, which is 12. Highlight as well what we want to know. We want to know the adjacent, which has been given the name X. Again, it's going to be TOA, because that's the, gone, that's the triangle the most colour on it. So what do we want to find out? We want to work out the A in this example. So put down A equals and cover up the A in this formula triangle. Now what you'll see is we've got one something on top, something on the bottom. So think of it as a fraction. O on top, T underneath. O stands for opposite, which is 12. And T stands for tan of the angle in question, which in this case is 49. So type this in on the calculator. 12 on top. Scroll down. T for tan, 49 on the bottom. 
press equals, we get 10.4. So that's 10.4 meters in this case, because it's meters been given in the question. So there's a few examples with the tower triangle. Next up, I'll just try these on your own. So again, four quick questions using the tower triangle. Have a go, label the sides, you know the drill by now. So pause it and play to find out the answers afterwards. So you try them now, I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, so let's have a look and see if you've got them right. That's what you should have got. And yet again, I've labeled the sides so you can hopefully see where you may have gone wrong if you haven't got those answers as I have. If you're still unsure, ask me, ask your teacher, replay the video earlier, whatever you need to do to make sure you can see where you may be going wrong. It can be frustrating, but with practice, you should find trigonometry something that can be mastered. So now we've done so, ka, and toa all separately. Now, because we've done them all separately, we need to put them all together now and find out the lengths on your own with no help or advice about which magic triangle to use. So what you need to do next is select yourself whether it's going to be so, ka, or toa. So in the next eight examples, calculate the length of the side labelled x and give all your answers correct to one decimal place. So here's eight questions I want you to try. Label them, adjacent, opposite hypotenuse. Highlight what you know and what you want to know, that will tell you which magic triangle you need to be using. So after that, follow through on your calculator, select for a correct triangle, and have a go at these. Copy them down into your books, press pause pretty much now, press play when you want to see the answers. So press pause now, I'm going to reveal the answers in a few seconds. So Without further ado, these are the answers you should have got. The answers, if you want to at a quick glance, I've highlighted them in red. So check them quickly. I've put in yellow here as well which formula triangle it was. And so there's a few sources of error. Maybe you've not labelled the triangles correctly. If so, check my labelling. If you have, check if you've used the correct triangle. So I've put the formula triangle to be used in a yellow box surrounded by red pen. So the first one was a ka, a cos, second one was a sin, and so on. So just digest that, press pause, make sure you've got them all correct. If you have, absolutely fantastic. So what we've done there is a tour de force, really in depth, about how to find out the lengths of the sides in any right angle triangle using trigonometry. So that's sides all the way round. So we've done sides again and again and again. So what's going to come next? Yep, how to calculate angles. So again, you've got the so, ka, and toa triangles here. So they're all good. Only now we're going to not be using O, H, or A. We're not going to be trying to find the side lengths, we're now interested in finding out S, C, and T. Only this time, when finding angles, and only ever if you're finding angles, we use a sin minus one button if it's a so, cos minus one if it's a ka, and tan minus one if it's a tan one. So this is surprisingly simple with practice. I'm just going to show you three quick examples on how to calculate angles. So first of all, find angle X. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. So step one, we need to label the sides. That's always the first step. So this will be a piece of cake to you now, I'm hoping. So that's the opposite side. The longest side is H, the shorter side is A. Step two, we're gonna highlight and underline, now it needs to be two sides we know, 
not just one side, but two sides we actually know. So what do we know here? We know the 28, that's for H, so put a highlight over the H on the magic triangles. We're also told the O, which happens to be 16. So highlight in O. So now we need to have a look at what we've highlighted in these magic triangles. And we're going to select whichever of so, ka, or toa includes both of the sides we've highlighted. So which triangle includes both the O and the H? As you can see, hopefully, it's only the so triangle. So that's the triangle we're going to be using. Now what we're going to do is use the so triangle to calculate this missing angle here. So as I've said, now we're going to use the S, but now it's going to be sin minus 1. So the angle, we're going to type in sin minus 1. So how do you do this on a calculator? Look for your sin button. Above it is sin minus 1 in yellow. You need to press shift sin minus 1. Now because we're trying to find out what sin minus 1 is, in plain English we're trying to find out the angle, we cover up the S, because that's what we're doing here. So if you're trying to find out an angle, you cover up either the S, the C, or the T in the triangle. So sin minus 1, cover up the S. What sides do we have left? So it's going to be sin minus 1, bracket, O on top, H on the bottom. And so you have to press in sin minus 1, cos minus 1, or tan minus 1. What you're going to have is a fraction with one side on top, one side on the bottom. And whichever side is on the top or bottom, you can find out by just blanking out the S, the C, or the T, and focusing on, on the positions of the sides within the formula triangle. So O is on top because it's on the top of your triangle, H on the bottom because it's on the bottom of your triangle. So then it's sin minus 1. So what is O? Well, O, the opposite was 16. As you can see here. So the opposite was 16. And that's going to be over H, which was 28. So I'm just highlighting these so you can see where these numbers are coming from, hopefully. So you type this in on your calculator, whatever comes out, that's your angle, and you're done. So, sin minus 1, you want it as a fraction, so I'd suggest personally type in your fraction button. Put O on top, which is 16, H on the bottom, which is 28. Press equals, and we get 34.8499, so on. So the actual angle to one decimal place is 34.8. Example 2. So again, find angle X. Here's all the steps, so let's have a go at doing it without going through the steps one by one. So you should know by now, first step, always label the sides. Opposite to this angle is the opposite. The longest side is this H. 28 is the adjacent side. Now we're going to label the two sides we know. So we know the opposite, which is 55. So colour in the O, the opposite. We also know the adjacent because that's labelled 28. So now we need to have a look at this so, ka, or toa triangle and think which one's been most coloured in. Which one of these triangles gives us most information? Hopefully you can see that the toa one has been most coloured in. And so this is going to be a one where we use toa. So 
So because we're trying to find an angle, we know the O, we know the A, we're after the angle which relates to T. But because we're finding an angle, it's going to be the tan minus 1 button. I'll uh, just scrub it off, actually, because I've sort of gone over the minus 1. I want it to be clear that I'm pressing the minus 1. So, bear with me a second. A bit slack on my part, I do apologise. There we go, a bit clearer. It's going to be tan minus 1. Now, O is on top of the triangle, A is underneath. So get rid of the T if you want to, but O goes on top, A underneath, because O is on top and A is underneath. It's as simple as that. Next up, we need to just think, what is O numerically? What is A numerically? O is 55. The adjacent side on the bottom was 28. So then we just whack that into our calculator. Whatever drops out is our answer. So shift tan to get tan minus 1. Fraction button, 55 opposite on top. Adjacent, 28 on the bottom. Close off your bracket. Press equals. 63.0 degrees is what you should have found. And that's the solution. Final example. I'm not giving you as many examples for angles because having practiced so heavily on the sides, it's just a slight adaptation of this general process of trig. So find angle X. So I'm just going to put up these steps in case you want to follow them religiously, which you could do worse than following these. So step one, label the sides. So opposite the angle, that's the O. Hypotenuse is this one. Adjacent is that one. Let's highlight what we know. So we know the adjacent is 18. So colour in A for adjacent, or underline it if you've not got a highlighter. We also know the hypotenuse, which is 22. So colour that one in. Now this time, we need to pick the triangle, which includes both sides we know. In this case, that's the ka triangle. The so has got the H, but not the A. The to has got the A, but not the H. So it's got to be ka. So copy down ka. Like so. Now what we need to do is, because we're finding out the angle, it's going to be the cos minus 1 button. So we're going to start with shift cos minus 1 because it's for ka. C for cos minus 1, it's an angle. So, first of all, write down cos minus 1. Now in this case, if you have a look at the positions of the sides in this formula triangle, A goes on top. H goes on the bottom. So it's literally A over H. If you want to block out the C, you can do, just to make it clearer what we're looking at. Next step, we can just type in what A actually is and what H actually is. Substitution of numbers into this formula. A is 18, as you can see. H is 22. So it's cos minus 1 of that. Almost made a mistake there. That would have been completely wrong. So cos minus 1, A over H. Cos minus 1 of this. So 18 on top. Refraction. 22 on the bottom. Close off the brackets. Hit equals to one decimal place, that would be 35.1. That zero would round up, because next to the zero is a nine, which pushes the zero up one. So it's 35.1 degrees. 
and that's example freedom. So now in the next eight examples, I want you to calculate the angle labelled x and give all your answers to one decimal place. So here's your questions. Take your time with them. Label the sides. Label or underline the two sides you do know. Of those two sides you do know, pick if it's the soft, the cat or the toa. If it's a soft tri triangle, it's going to be sin minus one. If it's a ka triangle, you're going to be pressing cos minus one. If it's toa, you're going to be pressing tan minus one. Take your time, copy them down and press pause. In a moment, I'm going to play the video and show you the answers to these. So press pause now, copy them down and have a go. OK, this is your warning. I'm going to reveal the answers now. So questions one through to eight. Here's the answers and here's what you should have found for the angles for X in each question. So I've included the working steps and again, I've included if it's a TOA, a SO or a CA triangle to help you understand where you may have gone wrong if you have, maybe you've not. So the final answers in degrees highlighted in red, but I've also included the labels and the worked solution, so hopefully it'll make it easier to highlight and identify where you may have gone wrong if you have. Hopefully you haven't, but if you have, it's not the end of the world as long as you learn from your mistakes. So that's all what I've got to show you now on trigonometry. That's all they can really ask you for foundation to GCSE. I know it's been a hard slog getting through that, but I hope you found some of it at least very useful. Um, trigonometry, if it does come up, could be anywhere between one and four marks. I've seen it before, it's a four mark question, so it's well worth knowing. Having said that, trigonometry shouldn't be your absolute and only focus. Remember your number skills, your algebra, your shape and space, and definitely your ratio. So there's bigger fish to fry, but trigonometry does have has its place in your revision schedule, or should do. Anyway, I'm going to say goodbye now. Any troubles, leave a comment, see me in class, or ask your own teacher. Thank you very much for listening, and I may well see you very soon.